G'day guys, how is everybody going? It's Gabriel flying with Gab. It's great to have you back on the channel. If you're watching this video, thanks very much for joining. Uh, and it's been a while. It's been a really long time since I've actually done a video. And uh, to be exact, it's been like uh, October 13th, I think was when I did my last video here, just up on the screen. Um, and for those who weren't on the channel then and first of all thanks very much uh, to the new subscribers recently to the channel here it's great to have you on board i hope i can uh, provide some guidance to you becoming a pilot and give you some advice about how to get there and just uh, you know help you to um, figure out what sort of you're after in the aviation field and uh, if you know this job's going to be right for you and also just to give you a bit of an insight into what it's like to be a regional airline pilot um yeah so october 13 was the last time i did a video what are we now the seventh of uh December already, so almost a couple of months now. Yeah, almost a couple of months, it's been a while. Uh, so what happened was I had to sort of step away from YouTube for a little bit just to separate myself from a few rotten eggs, uh, nasty individuals who uh, basically tried to um, threaten me, first of all, tried to threaten me by sending me threatening emails about myself and my family, big, big no-no, but also try to bring bring down my channel, get me to remove videos, and also uh, trying to get me fired from my job. And so the authorities got involved and uh, those people actually eventually end up sort of stopping what they were doing. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's just really unfortunate what happened. And what, what else can I say? I mean, all I'm trying to do here is provide some information for you guys and girls out there about this sort of career path and help you out um so and forgive me if i ramble on i don't like to do scripted stuff um and i don't like to do the full-on effects and fancy youtube stuff so if that's what you're looking for you're not going to probably get it on this channel uh here on the screen you can probably see on my youtube uh this is the last video i did 13th of october it was basically a video saying um, they stole my account sent me threatening emails and are trying to get me fired kicked out of the u.s you know so um, and as you can see here, they made they actually made a copy of my Flying With Gab channel and even post reposted videos that I had already uploaded, retitled them to such things as like hook up with passenger, regional airline pilot hooks up with hostess, smile high club, I cheated on my wife, like just some real really stupid stuff. So um, the good news is that's all sort of stopped now, but I, I just sort of took a, a step back from YouTube, just a bit of a break from it, uh, just try and focus on the job that I actually have, which is uh, being a regional airline pilot and uh, not trying to put in too much effort and energy into my YouTube channel because it was causing a little bit of stress as well. Uh, but I apologize for those who were looking for help and have asked me questions and all that sort of stuff. So really, um, just a quick update. Everything's going fine for me here in the US. Um, I am currently uh, in a on an overnight I won't say where it is. I'm going to try and separate myself even more now these days from my channel about my overnights where I actually stay. Um, you know, because it's not really too important where I actually fly to. What's more important is the experiences I get during the flights and stuff. Where I stay and what I do on my overnights is really up to me and what I do. So it's just another hotel room um, on an overnight. So I've got about 20 hours of layover here. It's great weather. A busy day for me today, four legs. It's been a long day, almost 12 hours of duty. It's been a tough one. Um, and yeah, so flying's been busy. Everything's been going great. Uh, last month, November, was about 75 hours of block time. That's, you know, uh, chalk time in the logbook. Really great. And then for December, it's looking at about 85 hours. So, I mean, these are like pre-COVID level sort of flying numbers here, which is fantastic. And it's really good, really, really good for... Uh, my experience, but also good, obviously, for the bank account as well, because, you know, for a couple of months there where the numbers dropped down to like 50 hours of flying, 50, 60, it was, you know, pretty hard on the on the old bank account. So things are looking really good with that. Really enjoying the flying. It's picking up. We're coming into sort of Christmas time. So flying will be busier than ever. The airports are busy. Denver Airport today was just absolutely chockers and chaos. It usually is. I mean, like Denver's just one of those airports where, it, it seemed like it was just like a couple of days that there was the whole like shutdown because of COVID and not many passengers, but then it was just like full on since then. And like, you know, I actually feel uncomfortable walking through there. There's just so many people. You're bumping shoulders to people all the time. It's it's pretty busy. So 
yeah, um, work's been busy, work's been great, and uh, it's just great to be able to get a video here. I hope I'm not rambling on too much, but um, probably more importantly, let's get on to just some of the questions that I had come through. A few questions just that came up uh, that I'd like to answer now, and I do, first of all, um, again, I apologize for not responding to these quicker. I should have just probably just let you know, hey, look, I'm just taking a bit of a breather for now, and I'll get back to you. So I apologize for that. Uh, off the bat, just the first one, Nigel Summers from two weeks ago. Hi, Nigel. Thanks for writing in. Hi, Gab. Can you please make a video on whether I should keep training to be a pilot or not? It is so hard to continue with flight training with everything going on. Should I keep going or just quit? I don't know what to do. Thank you for your help, Nigel. Um, so, Nigel, you know, it sounds like you've started some flight training. You said, uh, should I keep going or should I just quit? Uh, or maybe you've just invested some a lot of uh, energy in thinking about it and you're not too sure whether or not to continue. Obviously, it's a really hard time right now to even think about, oh, you know, is it the right time to become a pilot? And I actually did a video about now is the right time to become a pilot. Wait, the baby boomers, the baby boomer generation, like my dad's age and, you know, probably he's a little bit old now, but around there, like the 65 year olds, they're all retiring and there's so many of them that there's gonna be such a shortage in aviation. Um, and, it, and it was apparent even before COVID, there was this huge shortage and that's why there was all this hiring going on. COVID is just a temporary thing. It's very temporary. It's not gonna last forever. In fact, they've got the vaccine, you know, coming out very soon that there's no more COVID. I'm estimating by like June of next year. That's kind of like my estimate, just on what I think. I mean, I got really no idea, but that's just what I'm hoping for. June next year, everything's just gonna be gone. There'll be no more COVID anymore. Everything will be back to normal. And then, of course, there's going to be like a crazy rehire again. So, like, if you had started to become a pilot in January of this year, you could have had your commercial pilot license probably by now, and you could have got your first job um, early next year or something like that, maybe. And then you could have had some, you know, start to build up your hours. And then, hopefully, by the end of 2021, you've got your hours, you know, maybe mid 2022, you've got your 1500 hours, and you're ready to apply to the regionals in the US, depending on where you are. I don't know where you are, Nigel, but, uh, you know, for anyone that's watching this, is it a good time to keep keep training or should I start training or quit? Don't quit. I mean, like at the end of the day, you have to make up your own mind. I think, Nigel, you wrote in again because I didn't respond to you and I, I'm sorry, I'll just scroll up here. Five days ago, hey, can you please make a video? Um, not sure if you read these comments, but I'm waiting for your response so I can either start training or give up. So you said here, start training. So it looks like you haven't started training yet. I have a background in server administration rollouts, IT, Okay, and not sure if I should stay with my very high paying administrator. Whoa, very high. Man, are you rubbing that in my face or something? Are you saying I don't earn much money? No, it's all right. I'm a, I'm a regional airline pilot. Of course I don't earn much money. It's not about that, man. You know, like money doesn't bring happiness. It really doesn't. I used to be in a very high paying IT job as well. I used to be in sales, uh, selling servers and storage. Uh, to, you know, big 1,000 seat companies plus. Uh, very good money and uh, very, very good earning potential. If I had like just stayed on in IT, would have had probably a nice uh, big old house by the water in Sydney, uh, a BMW or a Mercedes, uh, uh, you know, a wife and a couple of kids by now, all that sort of stuff. But you know what, like I took the plunge and uh, you know, when I was in IT, I was like, um, I'd always wanted to be a pilot, right? And so I finally had the money saved up and I was like, you know what, I've really got to go for it and do it. I wasn't going to regret it. So one of the things, one of the advices I'll give you, Nigel, is like, do you want to regret later on in your life that you didn't do it? Because if you're, co if you're confident, you won't regret it and you're like, you're like, you're comfortable in your high paying job, then maybe don't pursue the career, man. Like you can't get into this aviation job because of money. That has to be off the bat, straight up. Don't get into aviation as a pilot to make money. Get into it because you have an absolutely undesire, uh, you know, underlining desire to fly airplanes and it just brings you so much joy. The joy of flight, it's something that it's, you know, you can't put a number on it. It's, in, it's not tangible, you know what I mean? Like it's a feeling you get that no one else can, can ever understand really unless they're a pilot. Pilots understand each other. Flight attendants and stuff, we all understand each other in the industry. It's usually the people outside of the industry that don't really understand the whole deal about what pilots are all about. You know, we absolutely love flying. We take our landings very seriously. We try and aim every single time to land a smooth landing. It upsets us when we don't. It upsets us when you uh, don't say thanks for the flight. Um, you know, it really makes us happy when you say thanks, nice landing, all that sort of stuff. So like we take the job very seriously and we, we take our passion for aviation to the extreme. Um, so get into it for that reason. If you're getting into it for money, don't get into it. That's my advice, but that's my advice, of course. Take it uh, with a grain of salt, all right? It's up to you. Um, you say here, you seem very successful and happy. 
success. How do you define success? Do you define success financially or do you define success about achieving your goals and what you've always strived to do in your life? Then yes, I am very, very, very successful. Am I very, very cash rich? No, I'm not very cash rich, but I'm very happy. Like I'm, I manage, I live within my means. I always have. Uh, I've got a fantastic wife and life is good, man. I love my job. I love my flying. Every single day I wake up to go on a trip. You know, usually it's very early starts in the morning. You know, I'm up usually 3 a.m. to start a trip. Got my flashlight out doing my pre-flight inspection in the cold, in the winter. It's so fun. It's just, there's so much experience to be had, especially here in the United States. Once again, I don't know where you are, Nigel, but like there's just so much experience to be had and it just brings me so much joy to do all the things that are involved with flying. Um, all the times an aircraft has a malfunction, there's a there's a thing that maintenance is required. It's all part of the process and, you know, there's times where you're not getting paid because pilots typically just get paid once the main cabin door closes and the brakes release. That's typically when pilots start to get paid by the, by the hour or, you know, per uh, part thereof, you know, per minute or whatever. But, um, yeah, you know, like... I love this job. I am happy. I'm very happy. I'm going to be upgrading hopefully very soon to captain, which is going to uh, increase, you know, my my financial status, uh, you know, not significantly, but it's going to definitely help. Really happy with that. Stay hydrated. One of the things, guys, when you're flying, stay hydrated. You're flying up in the very thin atmosphere. You're not getting that uh, nice sort of... Uh, rich air that you're getting on the ground however you explain it i don't know but uh yeah just make sure you stay hydrated all right make sure you go to the toilet often as well um yeah lesson learned there that's for sure don't hold your pee in guys and girls because you can end up getting kidney stones and all that sort of stuff don't ask me how i know but uh yeah you're so nigel like don't give up man start your training or don't start it do or do not you know yoda says do or do not there is no try and I believe in that strongly like when I set finally off to finish my flight training because I actually had the money the big thing for me as a like, young kid because I started flying when I was about four, uh, well 15 or so went my first trial introductory flight 2001 or so I didn't solo to like 2003 2005 I got my like no 2009 I got my private pilot license 2013 my CPL and then 2015 I finally finished off a few ratings and stuff but um yeah, financially, that was the big problem. And also back then, uh, when I was a young kid, there was a big requirement for um, Unit 2 mathematics in school and physics and English. And I wasn't the brightest kid in school, okay? I'll admit that. Uh, and so I didn't do two unit maths and I couldn't do it. So I did like a, a lower form of mathematics, right? And so my teachers told me I wouldn't be able to become a pilot. Qantas wouldn't hire you unless you had your HSC and usually a degree or something like that. So I couldn't get into Qantas. Uh, airline jobs were pretty much like a dream, very much a dream then, I, I, something I probably couldn't achieve because of my academics. And so, uh, yeah, so like the big thing was like school, school wise, um, you know, they sort of like told me I couldn't do it. And then the airlines themselves were restricting that sort of stuff. So I kind of like mentally, I kind of gave up. And I figured, like, even as a young a child, I, I knew that I couldn't probably become an airline pilot because of that. So a combination of financial and also that, but um, kind of gave it up. And then later on, I realized that, you know, like, I've heard stories that, you know, there's a lot of people that are successful in becoming pilots and they haven't, uh, you know, finished high school and whatnot. Uh, hey, look, I'll admit to you right now, I'm going to be honest here. I've been very successful in my life. I've worked for some of the largest IT companies in the world, and I'm also a, an airline pilot today. Uh, I never finished high school, guys and girls. So if you're still watching this right now, um, yeah, I never even finished high school, right? So I've worked for some of the most successful IT companies, um, Oracle, Microsoft, IBM. I've done a few things for them. But, um, you know, now I'm at an airline. And, I mean, like, Wow. All my stars have aligned, right? And they, they kind of have, but it was kind of, kind of like a planned attack. Everything has been planned in terms of my aviation career, you know? Like, um, for example, I guess once I sort of set off as my first job as a flying instructor, finally, I sort of knew <clears throat> the years it would take to eventually reach the level to be an airline pilot. But my sort of cutoff was the age of 35. That was going to be my cutoff, right? If I didn't make, uh, make it to an airline pilot by the age of 35, 
I was going to actually quit flying commercially and I was going to go back to IT. And that was sort of a decision based financially because, of course, at the end of the day, as I'm getting older and older, I need to have sort of a nest egg to retire on and all that jazz. Um, so that's important, of course. You got to like look at it and look at the age you're at. I don't know how old you are, Nigel, but I mean, if you're like, if you're 50 years old and you're trying to get into it, I don't know how much money you got saved up, but you know, um, it's all going to depend on your financial situation as well. But um, so, you know, I say like, don't get into it for aviation, uh, for money. Uh, of course, don't get into the job because it's good money because you've got to assume that you're not going to make much money until much later on in your career. So you've got to factor that in. So anyway, for me, the cutoff was sort of 35. I sort of said that, you know, but I can't remember the exact figures, but I was like, by the time I reach 65, I want to have like a million dollars in my savings account or something like that. Um, and if I don't make it as an airline pilot by the age of 35, that probably won't happen. I, I don't know what, I honestly don't know what sort of figures those were based on but that was kind of like my thinking process just at a high level overview so you know i've made it i'm 34 now so very close i'm um, only second year as a regional airline pilot but for me i've made it um i used to think you know the majors and that was like airline pilot but now i really don't care like the company that i'm in even though i'm just temporarily here on a visa the e3 uh visa in the United States, um, the company I work for is fantastic, and you know, if I if I could never make it to a major, I'd be so happy just to be able to keep on uh, within my current company, upgrade as a captain. Hopefully, you know, one day even become a check airman and, and uh, teach the new generations of pilots coming through. So, so that's sort of my advice, Nigel. Yeah, like you've just got to make that decision yourself. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but just make sure one thing is that you're confident that if you don't do it you won't be um, disappointed later on in your life like you don't want to end up later on on, on your deathbed going ah oh, really regret not ever trying to become a pilot or not doing it like you know if you, if you give it you're in a high paying IT role it sounds like you know like IT roles are a dime and a dozen easy to come by and they always pay well anyway so I'm like you know give it a shot go for it man do your flying get your hours get your uh, ratings and all that sort of stuff if Try and find a job. If you don't like it, go back to IT. Have a plan. Follow your plan and, and attack it and go for it, man. Be confident. Be confident. So that's that's sort of my advice there. Um, let's hear Chris Mays. Looks like you could land a 747 there. This is my, what video is this? The Aussie, oh yeah, the Aussie Bush Pilot. Very loud. Australian outback landing in very dense bush land, extremely dangerous. Well, look, you know, I've got a few, like, negative comments about, like, that. Oh, you go, go flying up in Alaska. That's real flying and blah, blah, blah. Like, hey, look, this is the best we got here in, in Australia. Australia is mostly flat, everybody. Like, there's not really much going on in terms of mountains. We don't get much weather. We don't hardly get any snow unless you're over in, like, the east coast there. Um, but not much flying really goes on there. You know, so, like, flying in very dense bushland, you know, in a single engine is, is dangerous. You know, you lose your engine, you're pretty much a goner. You know, those trees are friggin' tall. Really, really tall. I mean, look. Just look at this video. Very tall. You know, you lose your engine. You you you're down in the bush. You know, you're uh, you're in tiger country. You know, I used to fly over over this this bushland at night, and uh, I remember, always remember my chief pilot back in the in the day, Charles, from back in Bass Air, Australia. He would always say to me, "Well, Gabriel, he goes, if you don't like what you see, just turn your light off." That was his advice. At night time, you lose your engine, you don't like what you see, turn your light off. How good is that? <laughs> Crazy. Um, so, yes, could you, I could, it looks like you could land a 747 there. Oh, I don't know, Chris. I reckon, you know, I reckon I'll try it. Maybe I can try it in flight sim for you in a FS2020. See how that goes. I reckon you could do it, probably like an empty 747. The wings would probably, you know, scratch the trees and take down a few koalas and hit a few kangaroos but you know hey all in the name of science right no that'd be dangerous so you want to make sure you don't do that but um yeah hey look I've, i might give it a try sometime if i've got time to do it uh let's see let's the last comment here oh geez i'm all over the place i am all over the place people you can tell i haven't done this for a long time it's about 10 p.m. here. Like, I'm pretty tired. Like I said, I've just done four legs today. I'm pretty buggered. So I'm just taking the time here to do this. Otherwise, I probably won't do it tomorrow. Uh, last question, Simo134. Hey, Simo, thanks for writing in. Um, did you get your CPL? CPL stands for Commercial Pilot License, your, uh, plus your MECIR. That's the Multi-Engine Command Instrument Rating, uh, plus ATPL, Airline Transport Pilot License. Theory subject all in one. 
um, go or all in one go before venturing off to build ours. So I got my CPL in 2013, my multi-engine command instrument rating in 2015. By then I had already finished my ATPLs. I finished like my ATPL subjects whilst working full time in IT. Well, not full time. I was back kind of like part time while I saved up some money to go back into flying. So I did that a few times, like back to work, spend, uh, save the money and then go spend it on flying back to work again and then go back to flying Woo! so um yeah i got my atpls done sort of while i was working that took me a few like a couple of years maybe two years i think you've only got a two-year window these days back when i was doing them like up until my last one it was still like a three-year window then they changed it just at, like the last sort of minute there so um yeah that's what i did uh simo um you know get those atpls out of, out of the way as quick as you can uh covid's a great time to be doing that um you know while you're at home just get the, smash out those subjects get them done and then your, your multi-engine command instrument rating, that takes like three months to do. Uh, and then your CPL, you know, I don't know where you're at with that. But um, yeah, that's what I did. Um, so yeah, those are some of the questions there. And then, oh, what do we got here? Brad Newton Vlogs. Good old Brad. My brother Brad. Brad's a brother from another mother. Guys, if you're like you're remotely interested in fitness and you want to go to like maybe to Thailand and go to some Muay Thai boxing camps, check out Brad Newton Vlogs here. Great friend of mine. Uh, Brad says, brother, randomly clicked on this video and love it, man. 0430 um, is a normal sentiment to GA from what I've heard. Uh... Uh, what's that? I think it's why a lot of captains buy a small plane and fly on the weekends to feel stick and rudder again. Hey, you know what? That's so true, Brad. Like, there's so many captains I fly with. Even FOs. Some FOs have their own plane. I mean, Jesus, they must be rich. They've got their own plane, and they do take it up after they fly, after they finish trips. Some of these guys and girls, they go and instruct. I'm like, what does your wife think? What does your husband think? Like, you, how often do you see them? Because, like, if I was trying to do that, I would never see my wife. What's the even point of having one, right? So... Yeah, um, but definitely the st whole stick and rudder thing, you know, like when I, about a year ago now, I had an overnight in Canyonlands in Moab, uh, fantastic, fantastic layover uh, in a national park there. And I flew in a little like 1970s warrior and like uh, the guy I was flying with, he said, hey, take the controls, never fly. And I was like, yeah, I'm not really, I'm okay, I'm fine. I'm not really feeling it. I haven't flown a sm small aircraft for so long and I knew it was going to feel strange. So I had a little go and it just felt so alien to me. Like I used to be able to flow, uh, throw these little small Cessnas and Pipers around and do some crazy stuff with them, you know, within their envelope. But, you know, trying to fly again, these small planes, it just feels so strange. So I only flew for a little bit and then gave him back the controls. He actually wanted me to land the thing. I was like, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm all right. Don't want to kill us today. So, yeah. Um... Anyway, so that's that. That's cool. I'd love to see more questions come through, and I hope I'll be able to answer them in a timely fashion. So, again, I apologize for not making a video. I'll probably leave it at that. Um, yeah, I hope everyone takes care out there. Let's pray for, like, the vaccine thing to go through uh, smoothly and have a good recovery in 2021 back to normal. All right, God bless to you all. Flying with Gab over and out.